ask a doctor a question. Like, for example, I take Adderall. And then yeah. they'll say, like, you know, don't have, do not mix it with caffeine. But if you talk to anyone, they'll be like, you can have a coffee on it. The doctors, they have to say that because you, you can't sue them. I need a second level of, of doctor responsibility where they go, hey, don't mix Adderall and caffeine. Between us, you can have a coffee. And I, I hate when I'm talking to a doctor and it's like they're talking to me like the judge is next to us. <laughs> All right, so he wants a doctor with a second level of responsibility who's going to be honest with him because the doctors are being dishonest because they're acting like there's a judge there and they might get sued. I don't think that's how we're acting. Maybe we are. I don't know. I don't know how doctors are acting. And maybe you're not asking the right questions or maybe you don't like the response you're getting and maybe you think that the reddit boards are superior to your doctor's opinion because they're telling you what you want to hear or maybe you've had the experience that you did something unsafe and got away with it and therefore that proves it's okay let's look at how doctors are feeling how many kids how many young people do i need to kill dead because i made a mistake before i feel like yeah maybe i should stop doing that or how many times do I have to hear about my friends doing it? Or how willing am I to risk your life? Forget, I might get sued. Yeah, whatever, I might get sued. But what about the mistake I made causing death? <laughs> Maybe that's affecting my behavior. The reason why we are cautious when using excessive doses of stimulants is because excessive doses of stimulants can cause cardiotoxicity. You can die. You can die from mixing caffeine with Adderall. That's a potentially lethal combination. And here's the other problem. The other problem is that I don't know the dose. When you take caffeinated beverages, I don't know the dose of the caffeine that you're taking. And I don't know your personal tolerance to stimulants. I can give you a perfectly normal dose of caffeine and a perfectly normal dose of amphetamines, mix them, and you can die. So is it really worth risking death over? That's the question. And do I want to tell you it's okay? And what is the dose that's okay? Which I don't know, by the way. I, honestly, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying that to be facetious. The average normal toxic dose of caffeine is around 1,500 milligrams or so. So 1,500 milligrams. So that's an awful lot. I had a patient with seizures one time, and the only cause of his seizures was the Mountain Dew he was drinking. He was a concrete worker, and he took a case of Mountain Dew in the morning. So that's 24 cans of Mountain Dew. And I had calculated out it was pretty close to 1.5 grams, and it gave him seizures. He didn't die from the seizures, but seizures at a construction site are definitely a potentially fatal experience. So a cup of coffee, 60, 75, 100 milligrams of caffeine, very, very unlikely. Very, very unlikely to cause death. Probability is low. I don't know what the dose of Adderall is that they're giving you. But you're talking about asking someone to do something scary. We're scared. We're scared. We're not scared about getting sued. That's not accurate. We're scared about causing death. And so when we're asked questions like, should I do this? That's where we're coming from. We're coming from a place of trying to protect you. And I don't know that I should have a second level of responsibility. I don't know that I should be, okay, between you and me, you can have a cup of coffee. The risk of you dying, because that's what we're talking about, right? That's the risk. The risk of you dying or getting severe tachycardia or a rhythm disturbance associated with a singular cup of coffee and whatever your dose of Adderall, I don't know the dose, but is probably unlikely. Even if you're on maximum doses of Adderall, that seems unlikely. But I don't know that unlikely is enough. I don't know that unlikely is enough because the complication is cardiotoxicity unlikely to experience a minor rash, unlikely to experience a minor gastrointestinal distress, unlikely but possibly going to develop diarrhea. Yeah, you can do it. And we'll say, yeah, we'll say, yeah, you can do that. You can mix that. I mean, you might get diarrhea, but it's okay. But when we're talking about we might kill you, we're like, no, don't do that. And our threshold for saying, well, you know, a little bit of risk, a little bit of risk of death, is okay <laughs> because we're dealing with young people who are otherwise healthy and there's a analogy that we talk about for people who are gambling which is like are you willing to put it on the table right are you willing to gamble that 
are you willing to gamble with one of your patients lives and you're gonna get doctors who are pretty unwilling to do that very small likelihood very small how small a likelihood you need for us to not do something is shocking okay there was an incredible drug there's a new drug in the same class now but there was an incredible drug many years ago called felbamate and felbamate was a miracle it's absolute miracle drug and it stopped seizures it, it was a dream it was an antidepressant, it made you lose weight, and it got rid of all your seizures, and it was just absolutely fantastic. No side effects on almost all the patients. Dream drug. And it caused a thing called aplastic anemia. And when it caused aplastic anemia, you had about a one in three chance you would die. And aplastic anemia associated with this drug, Felbamate, occurred in about one in 3,000 patients. So this drug was killing about one in 9,000 patients. And the risk of dying from being hit by lightning is one in 17,000. So a little bit less than half of nothing, okay? Because, I mean, nobody's worrying about that. And that drug was essentially taken off the market. It was available for a while for compassionate use. But we never used it. Nobody ever used it. We're not going to take a one per 9,000 chance of killing you with a drug to stop seizures. Seizures are bad. This is not to stop ADD. <laughs> ADD is bad, but seizures are way worse than ADD. So I'm uncomfortable with increasing your risk of death by one in 9,000. Now I'm not talking about with a fatal illness that you're definitely going to get death from because you know you've got stage four malignant lung cancer and I'm giving you chemotherapy that has a 20% chance or 10% chance of killing you because it's a matter of risk benefit ratio analysis and comparing what you have to what we're doing to you but nobody dies well that's not exactly true but essentially nobody <laughs> dies from ADD it's hard to die from ADD it's a non non-fatal illness it can be debilitating, but it's not a thing you're going to kill you. But my drug treatment will kill you. My drug treatment will kill a perfectly healthy person. And I'm unwilling to take a 1 in 10,000 chance. So is it that high? Is it a 1 in 10,000 chance from mixing a cup of coffee with Adderall? I mean, I don't think so. You can ask that question. You can ask your doctors that question. You can say, what is the incidence of death associated with one cup of caffeine and my dose of Adderall? They'll probably say, I don't know, but they may then maybe they'll throw out a number. And if they're a reasonable physician, the number is going to be pretty low. I'm not the one who wants the coffee. But I think it's easy for me as a physician saying, yeah, coffee isn't worth taking a risk of death for. Like even if it's a 1 in 10, even, let's say it's 1 in 20,000. Let's say it's even less. Let's say the risk is even less than that of getting killed by lightning. Is a cup of coffee worth that? Is a cup of coffee ever worth, I might die. I might die, but this is a really important cup of coffee. If it was me, I would also say don't mix caffeine with amphetamines because risk of cardiotoxicity. Why, well, anyway, I hope that's brain splint. <laughs>